Yes, He is. God, my Savior. 
are God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our Praise the Lord. Amen. Every praise to our God. <laughs> That's a good way to start. Every word of worship. Amen. Worship. To worship God. To live a life that's worthy of worship to our King. Amen. Every day should represent our worship. Every, every action, every word, every thought, everything that we do should represent worship to God. Amen. Amen. We should be concerned about it. We should consider it. How does it affect God? Is it pleasing to God? Is it blessing God? Amen. Is it, is it blessing somebody else? How I'm acting, how I'm talking? Amen. Amen. We should worship God in our life, in our action. Amen. This is youth service. I'm glad you came out for youth service. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of youth, but there are some youth running around here and um, they got some, I'm sure the ones that are here, I know they got some songs. I've heard some of them practicing tonight when I came in. Um, probably going to read some scriptures. Brother Clayton is going to lead service for us tonight. So get in, get in and support him. Be, uh, be behind him. Say amen once in a while. Let the, long, let the young people know that you're backing them up. And uh, worship the Lord with them. Amen. Because as a, as a heart of a child, to have... As a child, amen, we should be when we serve Lord, when we serve God, when we worship God, when we think of God, amen, we th should think of God as a child thinks of God, as the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, amen. There's no one more important, amen. Complete faith, complete faith and trust that God's going to take care of it, amen. When you tell a child all their life that God is able, God is going to do this or that, or God is watching out. They believe it, amen, especially when you tell them, when they hear it from somebody that loves loves them and loves God, amen. But let's stand. We'll open up this youth service with prayer. This is youth service. They're going to be singing and, and praying. If you haven't been part of it, I'm glad that you are tonight. And uh, enjoy what it is that they have to offer, amen, and th their contribution to the church. So let's all pray that God would bless this, uh, bless this service and that he would have his way in this service. Everybody pray. My king, lead us, Lord. Get in and worship with him and support Brother Clayton when he comes up and uh, leads service. John saw a golden city, New Jerusalem come down. Twelve jasper walls and gates of pearl, such splendor all around. And he tells about a river of life that flows beneath the throne where we'll drink and live eternally in a mansion all our own oh if that don't make you want to go brother if that don't make you want to go sister if that don't make you want to go to heaven i don't know what does they say there is no heartache of sin, no sickness and no cross to bear, and death can't enter in. No fighting and no battlefields, no war, no enemies. Where the lamb and lion lay side by side in that land of perfect peace. Oh, that don't make you want to go, brother. That don't make you want to go. That don't make you want to go to heaven. I don't know what does. Oh, that don't make you want to go, brother. That don't make you want to go, sister. That don't make you want to go to heaven. I don't know what does. No worries and no more to fear. Our faith will be made sad. It's a glorious land of endless day where 
Jesus is the light. I got a lot of friends and loved ones there, and the Savior I will meet. And I'll lay my crown of jewels down when I bow at Jesus' feet. Oh, that don't make you want to go, brother. That don't make you want to go, sister. That don't make you want to go to heaven. I don't know what to do. Oh, that don't make you want to go, brother. That don't make you want to go, sister. That don't make you want to go to heaven. I don't know what to They say there is no heartache there and no more curse of sin. No sickness and no cross to bear and death can't enter in. No fighting and no battle feels no one, no enemies. Where the lamb and lion lay side by side in that land of perfect peace. Oh, that don't make you wanna go, brother. That don't make you wanna go, sister. That don't make you want to go to heaven. I don't know what does. Oh, that don't make you want to go, brother. That don't make you want to go, sister. That don't make you want to go to heaven. I don't know what does. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. I'm walking by faith and living in love. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Jesus has rescued me. Oh, I am not bound by found peace deep within now i'm resting in the palm of my savior's hand for i have been covered by the blood of the lamb i am covered 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 by his blood i'm walking by faith and living a little bit of faith and everything was made right now when jesus came and healed that little blind man i know i can be made whole by the blood of the lamb i am covered 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 by his blood i'm walking by faith Living in love, I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. Jesus has rescued me. Now Satan has no hold on my life, no. For I can speak the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, he still comes a knocking when he can. Oh, but I have been delivered by the blood of the Lamb. I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. I'm walking by faith and living in love. I am covered. Covered by his blood, Jesus has rescued me. Oh, 
Praise the Lord, church. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thankful for everything God's done for me. Thankful for the opportunity to get to lead you service tonight. Um, does anybody have a testimony? Brother Kevin. We're going to have Gwen sing her song.
Does anybody else have a testimony tonight? Brother Wes, will you please stand up and testify? Brother Chad is going to get your song ready. While he's getting ready, will does anybody else have a testimony? You know, I love Todd, you know, and I'm going to face him. Jehovah, seated on 
heart of this young man out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks yes the bible says when you love the lord you speak of the lord you will be excited about god you will be encouraged about god you will speak good things about god amen out of the abundance of the heart when you love god you will have a heart like that when you love god you'll have a heart that speaks good things that speaks positive things into people's lives Amen. That tries to be a good example to your friends and those that you go to school with. That wants to lift them up. Amen. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart. You know where your heart's at. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. You walk out the door. See what comes out of your mouth. You want to gauge where your heart's at? See what's, what's coming out of your mouth when you yeah. walk out the door. When you're, at, when you're spending time at work or you're talking to your neighbors. What's coming out of your mouth? Yeah. Amen. What Amen. shape is your heart in this tonight? Amen. I'm just thinking, praying and worshiping God with Brother Chaz tonight Amen. and saying, hear, hear his heart yes, tonight. Yes, Amen. Yes. My goodness. He's so, God is so good. I love that. I love that song. I love that song they sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Yeah. The thought of it. That I can think like God. That I can see what you want me to see. That I can hear what you want me to hear. That I can show compassion where you want me to show compassion. Lord, let me, let me be the man that you called me to be. Let me be the light that you've called me to be, that you've, that you've given me opportunity to be. Yes. Amen. This dark world needs a light. They need yes, some people does. to hold the light up. Yes. They need us to, to share the light and be the light that Hallelujah. God called us to be. Amen. Right. Let's be the light yeah. that God called us to be. Amen. Wouldn't it make a difference in the world? You know, you hear that, that one person can make a difference. One person really can make a difference. One person can be a catalyst tonight that starts a, that, that ignites a fire in this church that cannot be put out. Right. One person could get excited about God, could make a move towards God, could make a move towards the altar. One person tonight yes. could be the ignition that it takes to move the whole church and put the whole church on fire for God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It could, let it be you. Amen. My, my God is so good. It is so good to know him as king. To worship him and that he would that he would see fit to show mercy and grace enough to allow me to hear this and see this when I was brother Lon a miserable wretch so far from God but he still loved me and he still seen fit and he still drew me in and he still showed me this truth I'll never forget where he brought me from I'll never forget what where it was that he brought me from the rock from which I was hewn I won't forget that. That's a not easily forgotten. God came a long ways to get me. I'm so thankful tonight. He's so good. I appreciate this young people tonight, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Sister Faith and Hope, do you have a song? Well, they're getting up here. Does anybody have a testimony? Drew, do you have a testimony? skin and work.
Can somebody hit? Does anybody else have a testimony?
command of my father, father, I set my feet upon your mighty name, so let the rain fall Sister JJ, will you stand up and testify? Praise the Lord, church. I'm grateful and blessed to be here tonight. The Lord's been so good to me that I could have this chance and opportunity. You know, I am grateful. 
You know, the Lord is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. You know, I got two, uh, two new songs here. One I wrote and one I did not. And I'll let you guys figure it out here. We're going to do this in A. The Lord is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and song. I will not be dismayed. Unto the Lord let us sing Unto the Lord let us sing Jesus Christ is my rock and my foundation With joy I'll draw from the wells of salvation in Jesus Christ I'm a new creation with joy I'll draw from the wells of salvation the Lord is my salvation my soul and my shield I am clothed in his armor by his spirit I am sealed unto the Lord let us say Unto the Lord let us sing. Jesus Christ is my rock and my foundation. With joy I'll draw from the wells of salvation. In Jesus Christ, I'm a new creation. With joy, I'll draw from the wells of salvation. My song, my string, my shield, my sword. My peace, my joy, my King, my Lord. My song, my strength, my shield, my sword. My peace, my joy, my King, my Lord. Unto the Lord let us sing Unto the Lord let us sing Jesus Christ is my rock and my 
foundation With joy I'll draw from the wells of salvation In Jesus Christ I'm a new creation with joy I'll draw from the wells of salvation. With joy I'll draw from the wells of salvation. We're going to do it in G. I wandered to aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night, now I'm so happy, no sorrows inside, praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered along. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then take the blind man and God get back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrows inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate, narrows the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrows I light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. church. Does anybody else have a testimony? Brother Terry.
can I get Brother Ben, Brother Chaz, Carson, and Drew come take up, come take up offering? Have the group sing another song and get Brother Isaac on the floor. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. For I Power and love, as we sing, holy, 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 I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want. To Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. For I your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted to get up here and say something real quick for Brother Isaac. Get up here. Have you been blessed tonight? It's a blessing to be in church, isn't it? Amen. It's a blessing to it's a blessing to be able to serve a God that you can feel. Amen. That can hear you, that can see you, that knows you, that has been touched by the same infirmities that we've been touched by. Amen. A high priest that knows what you're going through. It is good to serve the one true king, one true God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Amen. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. He's so good. I wanted to say, uh, get Brother Isaac on the floor. I just wanted to say uh, I'm thankful for Brother Isaac. I'm thankful for the young men that work in the church and uh, the ministry that they have and that they, uh, put, they put forth an effort. 
They show energy. They, they give their, of their time and their effort and their energy, and they're in prayer. They're in Bible study with us, and I appreciate them. I appreciate Brother Isaac stepping up and, uh, and filling a need and helping out with the youth when they needed him and uh, coming into uh, uh, Sunday school and starting to teach. Brother Terry taught there for 20-some years, and uh, Brother Isaac has stepped in and let Brother Terry come up front a little more and spend time up here on Sunday mornings. But I really appreciate what Brother Isaac's doing for the youth. And I know that he, he's thoughtful. I know he's praying. I know he wants what God wants. I know he wants God's will to be done. And I know that he'll have a, a word of blessing for us tonight. So give him your attention. Would you give him your attention and back him up? Stay in the auditorium. Young people, especially young people, stay in the auditorium. Listen to what the word of God has to say to you uh, And as Brother Isaac comes and he breaks the bread for us. Brother Isaac, say praise the Lord to him. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, just thankful to be here today. Um, just, you know, I'm glad I get the opportunity to come up here and just, uh, you know, spread the word a little bit. I enjoy reading and just studying and just thankful that God gives me an opportunity to be up here. So um, we can go ahead and start with uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 18. And I'm going to, we're going to start at verse 4. Um, and I just want to say, too, God is just awesome because, brother, uh, Pastor Jimmy over here was about to, like, start preaching my message and, a lot of the testimonies are pretty much what I was going to talk about today. So I just like, I love the to see God move. You know, you know his spirit's here when, you know, he's just, he has a message to give or something to tell us. So, so we're going to talk about, you know, we're going to talk about our tongues today. We're going to talk about th the words we speak and how we kind of talk to other people and each other and just how important that is. So we're going to start with verse four and then I'm going to read down to eight and then going to skip down to 19, so just uh, say amen when you uh, get there. Amen. All right. All right. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a as flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a Tailbearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. And then uh, I'm going to skip down to 19 here and read the, the rest of the, to 21. It says, A brother offended is harder be one than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Let's go ahead and uh, pray the message today. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so today, um, so we're going to kind of talk about like, uh, you know, our tongue, you know, the, when we're talking about the tongue is like the words we speak, what comes out of our, our mouth. And here reading through in Proverbs here, you know, reading through four through eight, it talks about, you know, what makes, you know, a foolish man, essentially a foolish person doesn't really put much thought into what they're saying. The words that come out of the mouth, they don't understand the implications or the impact that they have when we, when we speak these things. So, and I remember Brother Jimmy, uh, Pastor Jimmy preached on this a couple weeks about discernment. It's very important. This applies to, like, everything in our life, especially the things that we say. So discernment, just to remind everybody, discernment is the ability to judge well. So that is vital. So when we're talking and we're out in the world or wherever we're at, you know, what we're saying, we have to make sure we're putting a lot of thought and consideration to what, you know, what we're saying because there's a lot of impacts as we go down. If we go and reread back here to uh, 21, verse 21, it says, so this isn't light. This death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So what this is saying is like, you know, we have the power in a, the words that we speak to other people. We have the power of life and death, which is, you know, in a spiritual sense, you know, the words that we say can bring life to people. It can, you know, especially us as Christians, you know, what the, the knowledge of Christ that we have, you know, we should be spreading good all the time. We should be a beacon of light to people. So we should be speaking life all the time. But conversely, you know, the other side, there's, we speak death. And what that pretty much means is we're not, 
killing people physically with our words. We're killing them spirit. It's more of a spiritual killing because, you know, uh, we kind of a little bit. We talked a little bit of this about um, in Sunday school. We kind of went over some of this and um, we kind of got way off topic. They're asking questions, but it was still good. But so anyway, I kind of talked with the kids about this It's really important, like, you know, in school and such, because, you know, like the words that we speak, you know, like I think Brother Jimmy said earlier, you like, for example, Clayton in school, like, he could be the one beacon of light in that school, you know, that can spread the word of God. Like he could be that one person and you never know what you like, you know, might be that person like Brother Terry said too. like he has people at his work that they know who to go to, who to confide in when they need someone for prayer or they need someone to talk to. They know who to go to. So, you know, we can't take that. And imagine if we don't do the work we're supposed to, if we don't speak the way God wants us to, and then we might lead somebody astray or that's that's horrible, you know, and if and it's going to be the blood will be on our hands because we have a big responsibility. So we can't take that lightly. So, yep, I just put also noted a characteristic of foolishness is the inability to control one's speech. So, and again, and we can just go here really quick. Um, this kind of bounces right off it. Go to James chapter 3, verse 8. This goes right in line with uh, what I was talking about. Yep, so here in uh, James chapter 3, verse 8 says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is, untruly, is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which were made after the, the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So it's just saying, you know, blessings and cursings, life and death. So we have like two options. You can speak, you know, we can speak, the positive blessings, the uh, great things that God's done, or we can speak the negative and the, the depressing stuff or what's taking us down or speaking, you know, worse things to other people, you know. And then just uh, continuing in James, just go, let's go to James chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 again here. So this is kind of going over, you know, if us being Christians, if we do not, you know, this is, kind of what we are when we're not, you know, speaking good things to others, when we're not speaking love. It says, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, bridleth means like to control his tongues, you know, with that discernment, that's where that discernment comes in. Not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows and their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So this is saying, like, we may claim that we're followers of Jesus and we, you know, we believe these things or, you know, that we're taught in the Bible. We try to follow Jesus. But if we're not doing those things, if we're not speaking those things to others, it's in vain. Like, it's we're not it, what I'm trying to get at here is the things that we speak comes from somewhere. Right. It comes from our heart. So let's go ahead and go to Matthew 15:18. So, like, this is kind of saying what I was saying earlier about the things that we say, they're just not, they come from us, they come from a place. And it says here, but those which that proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile a man. So we've kind of mentioned this before, the things that are truly in your heart, what you really believe, that it's going to come out eventually. It can't stay within you. You know, Brother Jimmy said, you're talking about when Chaz was singing, like, you can tell someone has a love for God when they are just, it's, they're excited for him, they're speaking about, like, you can't shut them up about God, right? So it's like, you know, so it's good for us to check ourselves. So I kind of see like, what are, how are we speaking to people every day? You know, what are the words coming out of our mouth? Cause like, those come from our heart. That means we need to check our heart. We need to check where we're at. You know, if our behavior is not where it should be, we need to go back and check and see what's going on here. So, and then I just, uh, you can go ahead and let's go to Romans 2.29, you know, so 
we can, we can try, you know, we can use our own effort and, you know, correct ourselves and try to stay in line and do the things we can. But ultimately, I wrote down here, there's really only one true way for, for our uh, tongue, our heart, to be truly tamed. We'll get right here. So we need an operation here. But he is a Jew, which is one in, inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So what I was saying here is we need, we need to rely on God. We need that conversion. We need that circumcision of the heart, which is, you know, spiritually, it's not a physical, you know, thing. We talk about that. But we need, ultimately, we need to be renewed of our mind, you know, through water and spirit. We need to be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and only really that way so God is able to convict us and he can truly lead us, you know, because if we try to lead ourselves, it's not going to work out, you know, like man that walks his own path, it's path of destruction, but if you follow God, he's going to direct your path. So we need him in order to, to truly, the, the, you know, because the flesh is imperfect, it's not going to want to, it's going to want to do its own thing, you, you know, just like little things too throughout the day, you might like get mad for a second at somebody, maybe you're driving or whatever. There's all these little things your flesh is going to want to, like, lash out, but then God, the, the Spirit, he's going he's gonna to stop using, like, hey, hold on, like, we got to go this way. And I really, like, you don't have to turn there, but in Jeremiah 17, 10, it kind of talks about God, he, he tries the reins of the heart. So I look at that, like, he's kind of, like, he's kind of, like, guiding, and he's kind of wrestling with it to get us back on path, you know, like, you're riding, like, a horse or something, you have to, like, struggle with it a bit to get it where it needs to go and I feel like that's what God has to do with us sometimes so I was saying here we must let God work through us so we can do the work he has set out for us and then so you know us even more as Christians right it's so important for us to be good rep be representatives you know for our which I'm kind of getting ahead let's go to second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray unto you Christ's deed, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I really wanted to uh, focus in here that we are ambassadors for Christ. So we're going to look, so I look up the definition of ambassador, and it says a person who acts as a representative or a promoter of a specific activity or person that pretty much describes us with our with God. We are representative of Christ. We're we <clears throat> act in stead of Him. We're supposed to represent Him in everything we do in our lives. So I came with this analogy here. You know, <clears throat> your family name, your last name is really important. You know, has a lot of weight to it. it has a uh, you know your family has a long. It's a bloodline. You know, have this long legacy. Say like <clears throat> your grandfather may have founded a business and. He did all this good for your community, and he has this big reputation that's gone on and on and on, and he's a lot of respect. And then, so it'd be really bad for you if you were to, like, one day, somebody, <clears throat> when you mess up or someone goes to jail or something, it puts a, like, stain on the family name, doesn't it? It's kind of like, you know, it's, it's embarrassing. It kind of puts shame on the rest of the family. It affects everybody. And that's the same way with us when we're here, because <clears throat> when you become a new creature in Christ, we're part of his family now. We take on his name, you know, Jesus Christ. So now everything that we do, we need to make sure it's in for glorification for him. So when we're when the opposite, when we mess up and we fail and we misrepresent him, it all falls on him because he's because our it's like a parent, you know, the kid makes a mistake, but it ultimately goes to the parent. They get all the blame. They get all the all the condemnation and everything, and we don't want that because it's not God. It's not God's fault that he, you know, that we make mistakes and that we fall away from the from our path. But just something to think about every day. You know, like you're not just representing yourself as an individual. You're representing 
God, you're representing your church, you're representing a lot of people are depending on you, you know, inside of church, outside of church, you have a lot of eyes looking at you. <clears throat> and I told the kids that, you know, like when we're, especially when you're in school, you know, or just out in the world in general, the world has got like binoculars on us as Christians because, you know, we hold ourselves to a high, you know, we hold ourselves to Jesus Christ. That's like the perfect standard. We're trying to be like him. So then they're just waiting for us to make mistakes. They, they're like hyenas on the side waiting for you to make a mistake, call it out and just all that, you know. So we had like, and I told him to, what, whether we like it or not, we're held to this standard and it's our job. We need to keep that. We need to keep pushing forward because that's what Jesus Christ did. He had the whole world looking at him. Never sinned once. He never, like, never got it, nothing. He was just perfect. He had the whole world looking at him. And this is really powerful. Yeah, so continuing on. So I was kind of talking about, you know, using our words out in the world, you know, for other people, for, you know, strangers, you know, our enemies or whoever. And I also thought it was interesting, you know, like, because <clears throat> a lot of the kids were asking, like, you know, what if someone is like a bully or someone doesn't like you or you guys don't get along or they're weird or something? It's like, it doesn't matter. You have to love them regardless anyway. You know, like, I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians 13. You have to turn it. That's, you know, all about love. You know, we can have all these other things. We could come here for church every week. We could do all these things. But if we're not showing love, it's, it's, it's a waste of time. And I told them, like, with your enemies, we show them love. It doesn't make sense, right? They, it logically, it doesn't make sense to them. It's like, you should be against me. You should not like me. You should. So when we are nice to them, we're showing that love. It's like putting hot coals on their head. When, I forget the verse, but it says that here in the Bible. It's like putting hot coals upon their head. And I always thought that was really funny because it just, the world doesn't understand like the love of Jesus, right? Because, and we just try to exemplify that because to them, it doesn't make sense. It's like, it doesn't make sense to help people that don't agree with you or this or that. And that's what's great about Jesus. He doesn't, he's not like a respecter of anybody or he, his love is boundless. It's to anybody. And I just, we always need to make sure that we're, you know, trying, we're trying to strive to do the same because I really, you know, we want to represent, you know, our church is called the Church of Jesus Christ, you know. That's got a lot of weight to it. That's a lot of meaning to it. We should, you know, we should be bold and proud of that. We also need to make sure that we also go out in the world. We have that meekness in the love and in the understanding because, and I know it's hard. Like, it's easier said than done, you know. It's hard to, to show that all the time, but we have to do it, you know. It's what we were commanded. It's commanded that we love God, love our neighbor. There's no infinite answer but it. Okay, so um, like I said, a little bit going back. So it's so important for us to show that love and to treat others and speak these things out in the world. But it's also sometimes we for kind of forget about inside our church walls too. We also have got to remember we need to do that to our brothers and sisters here at church. So let's go to um, Luke 22, verse 31. And um, And if you were here a couple Fridays ago, Brother Denton actually, I didn't even realize that I'm like doing my study and I was like going through just thinking of like things to add to it and add to it. And I just stumbled across this and I was like, oh, wait a minute, Brother Denton just preached about this like a couple weeks ago. But this is so, so vital. This is such a good verse here. So I'm starting 31, 31 through 32 it says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So that is a commandment right there that we need to strengthen each other, right? And I also was like looking here in verse 31. I just the, the wording was interesting where it says, Satan has desired that you that he may sift you as wheat. So I was kind of like looking through that here. And it's kind of like a meta it says a metaphor that can be expressed as so with the sifting the wheat, it's like shaking someone apart or to break a person down. So essentially, Satan, his goal is to shake our faith and tear us down individually. Another thing I thought was really interesting here is when he talked about um, he desired to sift you that you may, you know, when uh, he's talking to Simon here. 
um, the Greek word they actually used here is a plural word. So it doesn't mean just Simon. He was referring to everyone. So I look at that like us. That is Satan is individually. He's trying to sift all of us away. He's trying to separate us and weaken us. And um, again, um, you know, in first, you don't have to turn there. We know this one. First Peter 5, 8, you know, say the devil's a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. It's the same kind of concept because... Again, like it's, man, every time I preach, it's like brother and brother Howard did an awesome job Sunday because he's needed and he's kind of same thing. He's reminding us of the ultimate authority that we serve, the power that we have through Jesus Christ, who we serve. Right. He's reminding us that what we have. And then so because the devil, if in a one versus one, he's he can't touch God. He's not even close. Like he can't do anything next to God. So he has to kind of resort to these like weaselly like sneaky little tactics to try to get us because what I'm going to get into here is like when we're bound together when we're one mind one accord we're strong together and we're we're untouchable through the devil can't do anything so what he has to do you know like the lion when they hunt he's got a he goes for the weaker ones in the pack he doesn't go for the crowd of them right he goes for the stragglers he goes for the weaker and the ones that are separated and I look at that like us you know we have people in you know, might not have been coming to church as much, but the devil is working hard on them. And, and it's not really fair for us just to sit here and be like, well, I haven't seen so-and-so for a while, I guess, you know, and just like move on, just focus on church. It's our, it's our goal or it's our priority. We need to reach out to people. We need to see how they're doing. We need to strengthen them, lift them up because the church is a body and we're all parts of that body. And if we can't work in unison, we can't work in perfect we can't do what God needs if we're all separated or we're missing pieces or this isn't fitting right. We got to make sure that we're just take a minute and just think about, you know, maybe who hasn't been here for a while or, you know, like just reach out. Like I said, use your the words we speak, just a little things that can just make somebody's day, just a text message or just a phone call or, hey, I thought about you. And that can just completely speaking out that love to others and reaching out that can make such a big impact for somebody, so, yep, I talked about, yep, I just put, we have the ultimate authority from Jesus Christ, is, and, but here's a caveat I put, as long as we stick close to him and each other, so we got to stick close to Jesus, right, we have to actually stay connected with him and have that relationship, but we also have to be close and connected with each other as well, because when we're separated from each other, we're not as strong, and it's easier for the world and the devil in the world to get a hold of us, separate us, and just weaken us down, break us down, and it's, we don't want that, we, and it's, it's just, we have all, it's just so interesting, because we have this power right in front of us, we have the truth, we have everything, and it's just so easy to get off track, or like, be tricked into thinking that you don't have what we have, but we, we have the truth, and, you know, we have Jesus Christ on our side, so just don't forget that, and so I want to just kind of continuing off that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 10. This is kind of just going, continuing off of what I was talking about with just being one mind and one accord. All right. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye perfectly join together in the same mind and the same judgment. So as I say, it says right here, it says, um, speak the same thing. So it's just important. Again, I just keep seeing this pattern of like how important what we're saying is, you know, like making sure that it's the right thing, making sure that it's an in line with the word of God, it's it's a encouraging to each other, and and again, and this is kind of the same thing. We're gonna next with Philippians chapter two, verse two. And actually, you guys can come up to the music. I kind of flew through this faster than I thought I would, but so here I'm gonna read through uh, just read through two down to eleven here. If there be any 
If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowness of mind of let each esteem each other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath high, highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That's that ultimate authority, the name above all names. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And lastly, just finishing off again with the, and at every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So at the end of the day, too, I just put the most important use of our tongue is to exalt Jesus Christ. So we can, and I love the verse here because we choose to do it down here on earth now. We choose to exalt and worship him now. But when that day comes, the whole universe is going to be praising him. Every tongue is going to confess. Every knee is going to bow. So that, that's, the, that's a God we serve. And I think a God that that's powerful and that great, that merciful, loving I think he deserves a people that can at least show him that back and show that same love to others. So, you know, I just had a quick message here today. Um, just thought about that. You know, just the, the just think about the words you're speaking every day. And you guys can stand. I'm sorry. Just, you know, put more consideration of what you're saying. You know, put a lot of thought because, you know, it, it, it really makes a difference. It's a life. It literally is life and death what, what we're dealing with here. And. You know, this, this is just so important. It's not to be taken lightly. So let's use that. Let's use what God has given us. Let's use that, the, the gift he's given us. Let's use it to exalt, you know, others. Let's use it to lift others up in the world and, and here. Let's lift each other up. And, the, you know, ultimately, let's make sure that we're praising him and giving him all the glory. So go ahead and uh, you guys can come up and pray. And I just thank you for listening today.